All right, I saved one of the most fun for, for last year. I think I've been through most of the feathers I tend to use uh, in fly tying, but the last one that I haven't talked about is marabou, um, which I think is just the turkey, uh, it's some, kind of, some kind of turkey feather, and they end up dyeing it quite a bit to make it kind of um, different colors. So I'm going to tie um, one of my favorite uh, streamer patterns, which is designed to look like a leech or a... Um, it could look like a leech, it could look like a, uh, a minnow, it could look like a worm, it could look like a whole bunch of stuff actually. Uh, I'm going to actually load up some thread while we're chatting here. This is, this is um, a marabou version of a woolly bugger. Woolly bugger is probably like the one of the most revered fly patterns in the universe. I forget who invented it, one of those Pennsylvania fly dudes I think. Um, but it basically, marabou is the, is the main... Um, feather ingredient in a woolly bugger. It also uses palmer hackling like we did on the dry fly, except you spiral it up the uh, up the length of the shank. Um, and I got tons of woolly buggers in the box, but I started tying these a little while ago because, and I'm going to explain why in a second, this time of year in in the, 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 the shoots, uh, the currents are really high because the, uh, the canals are off, so most of the water is actually flowing downstream. Um, so you have to, if you want to fish the middle of the shoots where the currents are high, uh, you have to get your fly down into the, um, into the column where the fish are holding there. They're generally not rising this time of year. And even if they were, the water's going so fast, it's hard to, it's hard to, you know, uh, get them to see anything up top. So what I do is I get a, this is a streamer hook. I think it's a size four. It's a big hook. Um, ooh, let me knock that barb down too while we're here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a trick I learned from the uh, saltwater fly people. This is actually a fun one. Um, they were having a hard time keeping uh, their, their hooks out of the reeds uh, in the places they were fishing in salt. So what they did, which I think is super clever, they started tying with lead eyes, but they put the lead eyes on the top of the shank up here. Do that like this and then you tie them kind of in a figure eight and what it does and this works pretty well I do lose some of these in the bottom sometimes but what it does is gravity will then pull the eyes down like that and the hook rides up which is pretty cool uh, it's super fun actually um, and plus it's it's fun to tie with these eyes you can also use um, I use lead chain or not ch lead chain but um, the chain from um, Venetian blinds got a whole bunch of different sizes of that. But the lead eyes, and they're not really lead. They're just, I don't know what the hell they're made of, but um, they're just, they, they're kind of fun. They look like a, a little fish looking at you. Uh, okay, so what I usually, um, because I'm trying to get these fishies attention in the in the winter months, I'll tie in some of that crystal flash I talked about earlier. So here, I'm going to throw that in here, pull it back. There we go. Kind of wrap that to the back. I'm going to tie a little bit of that in as we go, too. I'm going to snip it off. You don't get a ton of that hanging off the back. Now, here comes the fun thing about marabou. Marabou, you can tie with, like, marabou a bazillion different ways. Um, this is what it looks like. You can take it out of that. It's super fuzzy. I love it. Um, but one of my favorite ways to tie with it, you, you get a single feather. Let's see if I can get a good one here. There we go. That's a pretty good one. Here's a single marabou feather. And you find that the tip of it, we have to pull the camera back a little bit for you to really see what's going on. There we go. And you pull the, uh, you kind of do the same kind of thing you did with the feathers before where you kind of expose the shoulder and you tie it in at that shoulder. But here's the deal. Earlier, I was kind of concerned about um, trimming that off and making it all neat. This is going to be a messy ass fly. So I don't care if it's neat. And then you just start spiraling this feather around the hook. And what happens as you do that is these barbs get really unruly, <laughs> which I just love. They just start getting really, really fuzzy and unruly. It's okay if they lay on top of each other. That doesn't matter at all. And then you just kind of bring it forward a little bit as you go. Kind of fluff it out as, you, as it comes along. Yep. This is looking pretty good. It looks ridiculous, I know. You're probably thinking, how does this look good? It looks like hell. And that's kind of exactly what you want it to look like. You want it to look ridiculous. Because what you're doing is you're creating these wispy marabou um, blades. Yeah, I'm gonna, that's probably far enough forward. I'm gonna wrap a few wraps around. Again, these don't have to be perfect because this is a very messy fly. Try to keep as many of those going back 
wetting the fingers and pulling them back like cowlicks helps too. <laughs> and what you're trying to do, snip that stem off. Ah, there we go. You want, let me bring it down a little bit for you. There we go. This is, I mean, as ridiculous as this looks, that's perfect. Because what you want is you want, when this thing hits the water, those barbs undulate. They're absolutely awesome. They just undulate underwater. They look like a little living worm or a, like I said, a minnow or a, um, or a, a leech or any number of living things that trout like to, to munch on. I'm gonna tie a little bit more flash in and then we're gonna repeat the exact same thing again <laughs> with another feather. And what's cool about these two is you can actually mix and match. You can tie a couple different colors in there if you want. Um, you can throw a white one in now or an orange one. I tend to stick with mostly just olive. This olive color seems to work pretty well in the Deschutes this time of year, actually pretty much year round. Uh, get the light a little bit better. That's a little bit better. Uh, it's got a little random feather left in the packaging. I wonder if this one will work. Yeah, it's a little small. Yeah, I'll go for a bigger one. Uh, the small ones are okay too, just for a smaller fly. And when I say small, I mean it doesn't fan out like that last one was just such a massively fanny. There's a good one. Yeah, yep. Yeah. This is good. They're good and messy. You can, uh, Max has caught fish on this where we're just, we have the, uh, the fishing rod on the back of the kayak and we're just paddling around and this fly is just laying in the water behind the boat <laughs> and fish will, you know, cause it's, it, it's got such good movement in the water that, um, if, as, as long as water is flowing over the feather barbs, it looks alive. It's totally cool. Totally cool. There we go, it's coming along. I got one little piece of flash that is trying to be obnoxious. But yeah, that is, that is that is as dumb as this looks, this is exactly what this fly is supposed to look like. It's crazy, it looks like a, a bad haircut, which is pretty much what it is. But, uh, and you don't have to be careful with it, which is really cool. You know, if you, if you screw it up a little bit at the end, it doesn't matter. I just wanna cut the thread. Trying to cut the barb, or cut, cut the stem of the feather now. There we go. Look at that. Looks ludicrous. And then you can just pull this back if you want. You don't have to. You can pull it back and give it some wraps here. And notice there's a little bit of that stem sticking out. So I'm going to cut that too. There we go. I've actually got some extra barbs on this feather, and I hate wasting those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull those. I'm going to cut those off of the stem. And I'm just going to lash them right here on top. And tie them in, give it a little bit of extra life. <laughs> uh, if you want, you could you could tie like a, a red. Um, you could tie red at the top there, give it like an accent in the in the front there. Uh, if you really wanted to, if I have any, you could dub. Let me see if I got some nice olive dubbing that would work here. Yeah, I'll, I'll throw this in just to show you how you could. If you wanted to, you could you could put some dubbing, uh, thread dubbing on the thread, some olive dubbing. So you can see it better and then wet it and then you can kind of spiral around like that if you wanted to that's that wasn't enough you can also um dub with marabou i've done that before with uh damsel fly patterns this one's fun this one's a fun look one i'm gonna fish this one soon <laughs> it's tricky you, you got a really particular trout probably wouldn't hit this fly just because it's it's so big and obnoxious if they're used to feeding on just mayfly patterns they might if, if it, it really depends on the type of river or the river you're fishing like the fall river i don't think i could get a trout to touch this thing in the fall river they would take one look and laugh um but the deschutes absolutely i've caught browns i've got, actually i caught the the biggest brown in the deschutes i ever caught was on this fly so it wasn't very big brown but it was high water year and uh, we're finishing off now. And uh, yeah, that's the marabou bugger. I love, I love this fly. It's such a fun one. And when it hits the water, man, that that marabou just does a. You can kind of see it right there. So totally cool. And then it, hopefully, ideally, it rides like that. <laughs> so the hooks up. So anyway, that's an introduction to some of my favorite feathers that I like tying with. And anyway, love you, Papa. Talk to you soon.